What is immunofluorescence microscopy? In immunofluorescence microscopy, the light microscope is adapted to detect fluorescence the light emitted by a fluorescent compound, that is a compound which absorbs light at one wavelength, the excitation wavelength, and then emits light at a longer wavelength, the emission wavelength. Two commonly used compounds in fluorescent microscopy are rhodamine, which emits red light, and fluorescein, which emits green light. First, the fluorescent compound is chemically coupled to an antibody specific for a particular protein or other macromolecule in the cell under investigation. Then the fluorescently tagged antibody is added to the tissue section or permeabilized cell and the specimen is illuminated with light at the exciting wavelength. The structures in the specimen to which the antibody has bound then be visualized. Fluorescence microscopy can also be applied to living cells which allows the movement of the cells and structures within them to be followed with time. What is confocal scanning microscopy? Confocal scanning microscopy is a refinement of normal immunofluorescence microscopy which produces clearer images of whole cells or larger specimens. In normal immunofluorescence microscopy, the fluorescent light emitted by the compound comes from molecules above and below the plane of focus, blurring the image and making it difficult to determine the actual three-dimensional molecular arrangement. With the confocal scanning microscope, only molecules in the plane of focus fluoresce due to the use of a focused laser beam at the exciting wavelength. The laser beam is moved to different parts of the specimen, allowing a series of images to be taken at different depths through the sample. The images are then combined by a computer to provide the complete three-dimensional image. What is electron microscopy? In contrast with light microscopy where optical lenses focus a beam of light, in microscopy electron microscopy electromagnetic lenses focus a beam of electrons. Because electrons are absorbed by atoms in the air, the specimen has to be mounted in a vacuum within an evacuated tube. The resolution of the electron microscope with biological materials is at best 0.10 nanometer. Transmission electron microscopy In transmission electron microscopy, a beam of electrons is directed through the specimen and electromagnetic lenses are used to focus the transmitted electrons to produce an image either on a viewing screen or on photographic film. As in standard light microscopy, thin sections of the specimen are viewed. However, for transmission electron microscopy, the sections must be much thinner, 50 to 100 nm thick. Since electrons pass uniformly through biological material, unstained specimens give very poor images. Therefore, the specimen must routinely be stained in order to scatter some of the incident electrons which are then not focused by the electromagnetic lenses and so do not form the image. Heavy metals such as gold and osmium are often used to stain biological materials. In particular, osmium tetroxide preferentially stains certain cellular components such as membranes, which appear black in the image.
The transmission electron microscope has sufficiently high resolution that it can be used to obtain information about the shapes of purified proteins, viruses and subcellular organelles. Antibodies can be tagged with electron-dense gold particles in a similar way to being tagged with a fluorescent compound in immunofluorescence microscopy and then bound to specific target proteins in the thin sections of the specimen. When viewed in the electron microscope, small dark spots due to the gold particles are seen in the image wherever an antibody molecule has bound to its antigen and so the technique can be used to localize specific antigens. Scanning electron microscopy in scanning electron microscopy, an unsectioned specimen is fixed and then microscopy coated with a thin layer of a heavy metal such as platinum. An electron beam then scans over the specimen, exciting molecules within it that release secondary electrons. These secondary electrons are focused onto a scintillation detector and the resulting image displayed on a cathode ray tube. The scanning electron microscope produces a three-dimensional image because the number of secondary electrons produced by any one point on the specimen depends on the angle of the electron beam in relation to the surface of the specimen. The resolution of the scanning electron microscope is 10 nanometers, some 100-fold less than that of the transmission electron microscope. 